I need any support, did I need any support, like for example, uh, physio or, uh, or something like that, and I said to the person, none of the 20 athletes, none of them got injured. Is that important? Is that, is that good? Oh, you you say know. that you use a piece or you don't use a piece? I didn't use a piece because I didn't need, there was, there, there was no, there were no injuries. No injury. I have people, have been, well, the good thing is that um, two of my co-workers were physios and there was another PE teacher from another, one of the schools that I was working with in the athletes. It was also a physio. So I had three available if, if anybody needed them. But, Unfortunately, nobody got injured. I know I had a masseuse that um, so the athletes utilized. She didn't want anybody more than 15 years old, so nobody on the actually got a massage. But, but the other athletes really did get massage. So you're wondering now, um, how did I go about choosing the topic? Uh, what did I do? And, and this is what really the second part of my presentation is all about. Like I said before, it is actually a, a great honor for me to be here. I, I never really expected uh, this opportunity. And uh, I still am, I'm, I'm still just in awe as to the fact that I'm, I'm here again with them. I, I was saying to myself that when we, when we, when our class was here, it's like we were, we were family from day one. When we came down for breakfast, the breakfast, the first, first morning, we were like friends. We, we knew each other for a very long time. There were people in the group who were very friendly, and they made everybody else feel friends. We had people in the group that would say funny things, and even if you were uncertain or feeling you know, tense, you would laugh. So the, the, the members in my group also helped to make uh, the feeling of the stay here. Very good. Now, I wanted to touch a little bit on how I implemented that, how I developed the program. And Dr. Robertson this morning said um, that he's going to give you a presentation on SWAP. Before you left your country, you had to do, you had to submit a, a topic, right? Um, how did you go about selecting that topic? Do you remember what you did? Did somebody guide you? Did you? look through the program and you see, okay, maybe this would be a good project for my country, or did you go and really think about your situation in your country? What is the problem in my country? Where do I see sport or my sport going in my country? Well, the good thing is that I had, like I said, I had uh, another coach with me, and we sat down, we basically worked together in terms of developing or, or selecting a topic for, for my project. But before we did that, uh, we did, because of my involvement in athletics, really, it was easy to determine uh, the sport that I really wanted to, to develop. Um, but we decided to do a SWOT analysis. Before I even came here, I was doing SWOT analysis. But Dr. Robinson, if you have never done SWOT, Dr. Robinson, I think tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, would uh, give Thursday. you something. Right? Thursday. Thursday. Tomorrow? No, no, I think it's Thursday. Right. He will give you a swap. I know Dr. Robinson is going to go through this, but this is, this is what we did in the, the coach and I in Antigua about developing the topic. We did an analysis of uh, the situation in track and field in Antigua. And we found our strengths, that, that is what really SWAT is. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and, threat, and threats. Right? Some of our strengths were that we were a young population. We had IAF certified coaches. Um, we touched a little bit on the IAF certified coaches. We, we have had level one coaching courses in Antigua. We have had in excess of 18 plus people passing the courses, but not a lot of coaches stay and coach. Although it's a strength here, it's also a weakness as well, because not a lot of uh, certified, there's about maybe five or so coaches that are coaching present, we certified. 
because the population is a small population as well, that's also another weakness. Uh, we don't have this big uh, talent pool to select from. So when we get the athletes, we try our, uh, as well, at least for now, try as best as possible to hold them in the sport. Be creative in our thinking in terms of designing our workouts so that they stay in the sport. We have warm weather all year round. We don't have to worry about uh, it getting cold and the athletes snow come because we don't, obviously we don't have an indoor facility. And so, and we also have a, an all weather service. So that would also work well with developing a program that I wanted to, the program that I wanted to, to develop. Um, some of the weaknesses were, forgive me if I keep saying lack, no, lack, lack. Right? Lack of a development plan. There were no coaching structure, nothing. Not up to now. As a matter of fact, because of this program, we are now uh, in, the, in the early stages of developing a coaching structure. And one of the reasons why they're doing this as well is because the IAF says, no, it's time for you to have a coaching structure. Brother, a lot of the other countries have coaching structures, right? In every, any, any kind of sport, we don't. We have five or six coaching coaches. See that? Coaching Not even that. We don't even have that. We have, if you decide you want to be a coach, or to coach some kids, you come to the track, and you start coaching. With no knowledge, no so, anything. That's so how how you how your coaches become level one in I, 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 or without? We did a coaching course. We had two coaching courses in Antigua. That's how I got my coaching level one. So yeah, but, but so there is no requirement to be a national coach to take a IAF course thing. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, we even what we do because our our our, our base is not that big. We don't have a lot of people interested in track and field. What we do is to incorporate the P, P teachers. So a lot of the P teachers have this basic knowledge of track and field, but they are not coaches. And uh, they don't continue them into coaching after they pass their exam. They do enough at their P level because they also have their own syllabus. And they work with that. And some of them don't even follow syllabus. They just send the children out to play, go play cricket, go play football. Right? Uh, sports day is coming up and they go run a race. After sports day, that's it. There's no, there's no development plan at all in, in that team. Right? Um, at the time, we found that there was no support for, for parents. Absolutely not. A child would come to the track. And, and, and sometimes a child comes to the track and I'm asking, uh, and they say, uh, good afternoon, miss. I'm from such and such a school and I, I want to join. Who sent you here? Is the teacher sent you here? Where's the slip from your school? Uh, I didn't have any. I said, your parents know where you are? That's the first question. That's the first question I ask. Your parents know where you are? No, I don't. I say, give me your mommy's phone number and I'm calling. Because I want to make sure that parents know that the child is here with me from such and such a time. That's what used to happen. Right? No, I don't do that anymore. I make sure that when you come to my program, you have a slip from the school, goes home to your parents before you even start to stretch. So that's how I am developing my program. And it still continues. So as a matter of fact, just before I left, um, one boy came to me and he says, the PE teacher said him, I said, well your PE teacher knows that I do not accept anybody unless I see this slip from your parents. Parents, the slip goes on, the child is coming to help examine on the track. He will be there or she will be there from 3.30 to 6 o'clock. That's what I accept. I don't accept anybody just coming into the program without, without parent or support. They can't get that class with They start by the school. And like I said, I know most of the, of the um, principal signatures. Because I have a very good relationship with uh, most of the, of the, of the principals of the school. But they, they don't.
some of the opportunities that our athletes have in Antigua, or anywhere in the world, for, for, for that matter, is that one of the opportunities that they have is scholarships. I benefited from scholarships, and I make sure that at, any, at every opportunity I get, I am telling the students, hey, I went to university for four years. You think my parents can afford to pay for college for four years? My mother has seven children. Can she afford to send me to college? I was the last one, the last time. Could she afford to send you to school for four years? And I asked them, would you like this opportunity? This is a way to get them up to further your education. If you develop your talent in track and field or whatever sport, you have this opportunity. I traveled the world. I've been to Australia. I've been to Japan. I've been to Malaysia. Don't talk about the Caribbean. I've been. I've been to El Salvador. I've been to Guatemala. I'm here in the United States. I've been to England, Germany, France, Sweden. These are the kind of opportunities that you have while you're in sports. You are now benefiting from one such opportunity. So you look at the opportunities in your community to say, uh, okay, if you're involved in this, this is what can happen. And now you're also getting the opportunity to experience different cultures. We are all from many different cultures. We speak many different languages. Uh, and you, you get an opportunity to learn from it other about your country. And that is the beauty about sports. It, it, it allows you to learn so many different countries. And so these are some of the opportunities you have. Exposure to international uh, uh, competitions. When you fall in the game. When I go to the Olympic Games, if I sit on my doing anything, doing nothing. As a coach as well, you can go to the international competitions. Somebody was here was, was in, in London. Nobody here was in, see? We had people here in London. So these are the opportunities you have if you participate in some sort of sporting activity. These were some of the opportunities that I found. These are the dreaded ones. Don't really like to talk about them because these are the threats. We, in Antigua, we have this problem with uh, losing our athletes, track and field athletes, to other sports. Like I said, we don't have any plan. Neither does football. Neither does cricket. Neither does basketball. But they seem to gravitate to the uh, to the team sports. Right? And this is, this, is, this is one of the major problems we have in Antigua with our athletes. Like for example, like I was telling you earlier that uh, some of the schools are football schools, some of the schools are basketball schools. When it's track time, they pull from the basketball team, pull from the other sports, and make up a track team. Right? So these are some of the threats. For example, like I was explaining to you with, with the hurdles, we have collapsible hurdles. Those are some of the threats we found. We know we needed these things to work with, to really develop if we were to develop uh, our, our my, my, the program. Lack of a modern facility, for example. There is no uh, toilet facility at the facility that I coach. And you're asking me, how do you work there? Mm. There, there is a building, there's a school next to the track. A road just separates them. And I lace with the, with the security to allow my students in to use the bathroom facility there. This is also one of the deterrents of our young girls participating in sport, because in track and field, exactly. Uh, because there is no, none, absolutely none. That absolutely can be a threat for sure, a deterrent for, for, for young girls. And 
parents would know that. This is so big that there is no, no proper facility. And it's, it's almost every day on the radio stations you will hear somebody talk about, if you want to develop this track and field thing, Yasko is not the place. You don't even have back no facilities. I did not allow that to stop me. What I did, build it next door, ask them. Right? Other users of the facility. It might, it might sound strange to you that um, other users of the facility, that's, that's right. Of course it is. In Antigua, politicians can say the most crazy things. Don't you know that? Anyway, look. You just have to turn on the TV and you hear some crazy things. The politician in Antigua, responsible for sport, said the facility that will the only facility on the island for track and field, he said, it's a public place. Anybody can use it. <laughs> but who tell he say that? Uh -huh. Would you believe you have people bringing dogs? <laughs> Would you believe people bringing bicycles, riding on the track? Would you believe people bringing prongs, riding on this facility? Because this gentleman says, the Yasko, that's the name of the facility, is for everybody. Obviously, it's going to cause some serious problems. We have had situations where athletes running into people who try to walk across the track not paying attention, not understanding that this is a training facility. So we don't have, really, as far as I'm concerned, we don't really have a training facility. So what they did do, it's a good thing. Now, Yasko is on the, 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 the control of the National Athletic Association. So what we have done now is to lock the gates, using one gate, we don't allow anybody to drive in to the facility except some of the coaches. And so when we see people on the track riding bicycles and with the dogs, we let them know this is not allowed at the facility, it's a training facility, and this is no longer allowed. So the situation there now is becoming a little better for for, for track and field in Antigua. So that's a, that's a, at the time, that's what it was, but now it's, it's, it's definitely changing. And as a matter of fact, crazy me sometimes, they give, they, they gave me, they gave me a key. So crazy me, when I drive in the gate, I'm locking the gate behind me. Sometimes there are another car trying to get in behind me, and I say, can't come in. Go around the other side, and you walk in. Because what they do sometimes, they drive a car across the track. How can you do that? There's a lot of problems that we have facing us in, in, in a small developing country. So I didn't let that uh, trouble me. Before you left home, you had to develop, uh, I guess, I guess uh, Dr. Robinson is also going to tell you how to develop your problem statement. And this is what I was telling you about earlier that's, that I did. I was exactly my problem. I think it might have been really down up on my final project. But when I came, that's what it was. To develop, that's the problem. You don't have a program. Don't have it. There's not one. And he wants to, and he's doing that. 
and he's listening to the comments that I'm giving feedback to the, to the athletes, and he will say to me, Mommy, Sister Chat is not using their arms properly. Seven years old. So you understand, he's not in any organized training. He's not there and running around and running 600s. I see groups doing that in my church, and I didn't want that at all to continue. If, if, if my son's son decided to train, there is no way he could train around somebody that's given a six and seven year old child. Six miles to run. I saw that in my country. Six years old. And he was one. As a matter of fact, let me give you even further. This young man ran six miles the Sunday morning. There was another race the Sunday afternoon, about three miles. He ran it. Very same day. The next morning, his school was having a, a fun run, a celebration for their school uh, anniversary. Two point something miles, and he also ran it. I call that child abuse. That's my opinion of that. And I did not want that to continue in my country. So, sometimes you don't get change. You don't change things like that. It's step by step. And that is what I want to do with my foot. And I can say, I see people starting to change. This changes slowly. Maybe not as fast as I, I wish, but they're changing. They're thinking differently. I do drills with young kids, with the young ones that come out, and I see how the coach is doing. They never used to be before. If you understand what I'm saying. I'm doing dynamic warm-up. I remember when I went home, after hearing about do dynamic warm-up because it's better. And I go home, I'm doing dynamic warm-up, I'm doing leg swings. And within less than two weeks, I see other people doing leg swings, doing dynamic warm-up. So right now in Antigua, everybody's doing dynamic warm-up. And that's what you want to see, that at least you, me, make some sort of difference in your country. That is what I want to do. That was my mission for my family. Some of my outcomes, and you will have to do this with me, Dr. Robertson. You have to present this to Dr. Robertson. Your intended outcome, what do you want to happen with your book, your project? You will hear some more about the LTAD program, which is what I did. LTAD, long-term athlete development. In essence, that's what it was. Nurturing athletes slowly, gradually. Uh, I think Richard Way is going to talk. I think most of us in our program did something with LTAD, and uh, the Canadian model is, was, was very instrumental in many of us. When we heard what Richard Way had to say, it was like a big discussion in the hall after we were done about LTAD. We were doing more research. Everybody wanted to know about this LTAD. And the Canadian has, I think, one of the best, if not the best, LTAD. It's long-term athlete development, right? And again, uh, I wanted, to, at the time, I didn't know what was going to happen to gain parent support. From there, I developed a program that I think in Antigua right now is a. Uh, it's going to be. I think I made. I, I think I made a, a really big impact on the development of sport in my country. Um, I never expected that. Totally, I was totally unexpected that this was going to happen. This has completely changed the way I work. This program. It's changing the way I see some of the other coaches train gradually. And that's how I developed my program. Are you are getting support from the your uh, national federation or the sport, the people around you is supporting you. So it's they are supporting. They are they are uh, no this uh, this program which you are doing is good so people around you is supporting about this. I'm getting, uh, like I said, uh, what we have in Antigua are several clubs. Even though we're training towards the same common goal is to develop athletes, we might have different ways of doing it, but 
we want to, we have clubs. Each club has their own way of working. But do you sit with the club's people or no? All the people who is involved in the I, 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 First of all, I'm a female. You understand? Yeah. They are not, I, I get, they are I not, get, uh, the only support I get, to be honest, the only support I get in terms of, you know, wanting to do this pro project were, was from the NOC, the, the president of the Athletic Association, and the other coaches working with me. The other clubs, they look at me. Some of the kids don't even say good afternoon. Is she huh? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's the first thing come out of Premier League. Yeah. I remember going back home after the program, and I went to my office and I sat down. I did not discuss anything with anybody because I was doing research. We had to do a lot of research. Uh, research your topic. Um, for example, if they talk about rehydration and anything that you did not, and you wanted to know uh, how to, okay, Gatorade is so expensive. How can I make my own uh, rehydration drink? I was going online, Google Scholar, write that down, Google Scholar. Google Scholar will help you. I typed in something, for example, we had Jason saw regeneration of athletes, and it will tell me how to make my own dehydration drink. If you understand what I mean. So that's what I did. I couldn't buy Gatorade, too expensive. So I made my own. There's a statement here that you said, the mission statement. It shows that you during the athlete then from beginner to senior level. So which stage of STAD you you work on or you choose? Actually my project that is what no no I, that was just an example, that's not what exactly what I did. It was based on MTAD, but because my the, the block of children were from different levels, <laughs> right? So I incorporated different levels of it. So but most of them were were beginners. Most of them were beginners. Like the oldest person was 18, and not because he was 18 meant he was training for five, six years. Yes, that's what I mean. Right. So, so he was uh, um, training to train. I think that's what it was. Or yes. 18 training to.
example, the coach is not responsible for coaching except for just making sure that the athlete is registered in the event, maybe giving some advice, maybe. But that's and making it then, yeah. We don't, what we don't, that's what I'm saying. We don't have this thing as, uh, I don't believe in it either. I'm coaching this athlete all year round. And there's, because there's a major competition, he has to go to another coach. How, do, how would that other coach know? Yeah, what he's doing. There must be some continuity. If that happens, if they go away, like for example, when the athletes went to Barcelona for a World Junior Games, as a matter of fact, they had, they had two athletes at the World Junior Championship. I write the program for that athlete. Arrival, what he, does, what he did at the first morning, what he did throughout and leading up to competition. That coach would not know what to what to, to do. He's only accompanying the athlete. So I mean, how do you how do you do all the coach instruction? Yes, that's what that's what we're doing. And another another part. Are you part of the group? Yes, I am. It's very, very early. We had our first meeting and we are we're supposed to be doing some research on it, and uh, that's what we're doing. I think for me, another project that, that I might be doing is to do grassroots. Um, like I said, we only have one facility on the whole island. It's not a very big island. But in Antigua, there is a need for diversification because everybody comes to the track. So you understand how crowded that can be. Um, the need is now getting there that we have maybe a club out in one of the villages on the, on the, on the, on the outside. So that this, uh, I, don't ha I don't have to have this 50 something athletes. If you live in our states, that's one of the villages. There's a coach there that will help you develop your talent. If you live in, uh, we call a village, Freetown, that's one of the farthest villages in, on the island, 15 something miles from the city. So you understand how that athlete, how that athlete will get to St. John's every day for training. Bus stops running at a certain time in that village. How is he going to get back home? So there's a very strong need for us to be doing that. So that might be my next goal. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I think I need to, if I can make that difference, I will continue to make that difference. <coughs> uh, uh, you are telling me that the uh uh, it was difficult to sustain uh, uh, kids in athletics because uh, they are taking part for the whole basketball the whole thing. And uh, what do you do to motivate them to be in uh, athletics and uh, how they, uh, uh, what's the results you, you see? Are uh, you still losing a lot of athletes to other sports? We are getting athletes from cricket. Really? Young man that won Commonwealth Games was a cricketer. He started out playing cricket. His father was a cricket cricketer, a national cricketer, a Leewood Island, for those of us in the Caribbean, you know, Leewood Island uh, captain. Mm -hmm. So his father was gearing him towards cricket. But then he ran at his sports day at the school. Like I say, the sports days are very big things. Red house versus blue house, green house versus yellow house, those kind of things. That's what that's our that's our coaching, that's our track and field system is based on in, in Antigua. I don't know for Grenada and right. we, we like houses. Right? And at and at sports day, a lot of the athletes are be faster than you. You can That's that's how we get that kind of uh, of, of, of competition. In house, in school. And then we have this big thing they call it school. But not because you win at your sports day. Doesn't mean that you want to go on one at the national in the school. So you, you understand what I'm saying? So that's what happens. Oh, what but he ran, he ran there, mm -hmm. and then he came to national in the school. And the boy just blew away everybody. So he came to the track as a player. What I'm saying is, uh, once they, uh, they are older, like 18, 19, or when they finish school. So uh, how do you maintain them in athletics? Or how does that work? 
Young man right now who's going off in December to Middle Tennessee State University. Same young man that I spoke about. The other one is being offered, is offered a scholarship from Kansas State to go off to university. Once, I think, once one or two of us go off, more, I bet you more people, more athletes, would want to participate in some kind of sports so that they can get the opportunities. And that's one of the, the things that we, we have been discussing with them. But first they have to write this SAT. Well, another thing that we are doing also, uh, the SAT is a scholastic aptitude test and uh, we are now getting um, classes arranged for some of those students that are, that are ready for scholarships uh, probably will be ready soon, if not now, to do the SAT so that they can do well enough to be offered scholarships because you have to also pass that SAT. They're doing well in the classroom, they've done, one girl now has seven subjects, the other guy has eight subjects, the other one is ready to go out, the other one has six subjects. So they, they now need to do the SAT so that they can be offered scholarships. That's what we're doing. I don't know another one. Um, like I say, uh, that's the only, that's one of the ways. But, but we'll keep them through, through club system and through a national champ. So they still get to represent the country in the trip towards the club meet. That's another way as well. But like I say, if 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 you see people in Antigas, the Antigas are very funny people. You understand? If I get if I get beat one or two times, I'm ready to give it up, right? Um, they don't see sport as a way of getting further ahead. My mommy and daddy probably can afford it. There's a board of education that will, if I want a scholarship, if I want to do further my education, the board of education offer scholarships. Um, there's uh, scholarships to China to further my education, but I don't have to participate in school. Do you know what I mean? They prefer to go off doing their, their, their education without the school. Because right now, one of my athletes right now is in China. In China. Studying. Not, not participating in school. How do you find this? Sorry. Sorry. For the intended outcome. Overall development of student athletes. Maybe if I want to use this outcome, I would say that not depend on the ranking or what we, we achieve. It's about how to education, give a good supportive uh, education for the students. Right. Like what you said, we, we do dynamics sitting and they follow you. Right. Right. So it's not about the results. It's so about, again? Not about the results, because no. in six weeks no. I can't make results, especially in our. No. Coaching, about how to make a good pace for coaching. Right. And the second one is TAD. We say how can I make them stay in my sports, not to go to other sports. In TAD, you should use another sports for active rest or for kind of. But same thing, if I'm a table tennis player, I will put them in a track and use it to get the benefit from my table tennis. I will convince our athlete to go to track and feed some exercise conditioning and come back and it will affect their performance. For me, it's obvious. You see, yeah, you should have the, you take the benefit of everything. Personally, this past summer, I encouraged some of my students to go swim. I, I, I don't, I, I, I discourage them from going to play football for one reason. Injury. Thank you. <laughs> For swimming, cycling, of course. Be careful when you play basketball, because as a matter of fact, we used to go play basketball every Friday. We used to go play basketball, but I am monitoring if it's getting too, if they're getting too aggressive, because you know our boys when they play. And I'm having a girl on each team, and if they, you know, getting you too aggressive, the I am, game. You right? You can do all of that. Yes. As a matter of fact, we made up a game. Right. Now people. Uh, getting medals from the individual uh, games like uh, tennis. Now we also do a lot of uh, special try to uh, uh, concentrate on the individual because even football we have 20, 
if they win, they bring one million like in the in the, in the uh, Olympics. <laughs> yes. So a lot of country now they change their vision about uh, because they want to get more medals. So this also one point that we can encourage our players to tell them that you are alone, you can do a lot of right. things. See you against the clock. Yes. Right. Right. The, the thing is with in Antigua right now, um, 108 square miles, 72 to, to 80,000 people. And we are in the second round of the, the football World Cup, FIFA World Cup. We played uh, USA. <laughs> we played the USA, got beat, three, two, one. No, man. Hey. Mm -hmm. Hey. <laughs> we got beat, two, one. But I am telling you right now, we got beat. We, we drew with Jamaica. Jamaica is a big powerhouse in the Caribbean, in all sports. And we drew, the first, well, at least the first game, with Jamaica, nil nil. We got beat by, El Salvador. El Salvador? Somebody here from El Salvador? <laughs> Sorry. It's alright. Shoot, I'm fine. We got beat by El Salvador. Is it El Salvador or Guatemala? I think it was Guatemala. Guatemala. It was Guatemala. Guatemala. We got beat by Guatemala. But there were some problems with that game. It was raining. Cats and dogs. Water not field. And the, goal, the goalkeeper was complaining that somebody had lazy. When they got to Antigua, we lost again. But my point is, you see where football is right now in, in, in my country. We never thought we would have gotten this far to be playing in the United States. We're in the second round of qualification in CONCACAF. As a matter of fact, uh, USA is coming to Antigua. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big problem for us because I think uh, where we have them playing, it's on a cricket pitch, and everybody knows how cricket is. That's, that's how the, the field it doesn't look so to the naked eye, that's how it, it shapes. There's a pitch in the middle, and right. that's how it, it shapes. And they come with that they don't want to play there. That's your field. That's your field. Right? That's our field. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I was saying about the football, you see where football is, you see where our athletes because hey, you get to play the World Cup. But I am telling them, hey, you can go to the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> you can travel the world. Because the football is team. But it's you against the club. That's one of, that's one of the things that I do. It's you against the club. Mm -hmm. Except for a relay, when you know you have to have four people coming to jail as one, well, it's you against the club. That's what I tell you. Uh, in your project, in your sport, do you focus on sprinters or other disciplines also? Luckily for me, almost all of them did 100 and 200 meters. But what I found is when we were ready for inter-school championships, because they were athletes, the schools wanted them to do other events. And they went out and did, and won gold medals. One girl jumped uh, high jump. She did high jump. High jump. I mean, I can quote a little bit, maybe big in the level, but she was jumping one meter forty at thirteen years old. So you understand how excited that made me feel. Because I feel in doing my coaching, doing my training with them, I developed all around her. Not just sprinting, sprinting, sprinting. I did a little bit of plyo. I gave them in the, left them um, in the long jump. I developed them totally, not just for one event. Yeah, I had athletes running 800. A boy, he was second in the 800. It shocked me because I never knew. He had a son. One boy threw the jump in. He's like, really? Boy went to jump in. Understand? So I was shocked to see. How athletic these young people are from just trying to, you know, mold them to, you know, be, be systematic in my training. How do you do, how did you make the, the connection with the university so as to give them external incentive towards the scholarship? Did you make promises to the scholarship that may not be reality? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
they are scholarships are there. Mm -hmm. Question is still standing. Quest uh, in Kansas State. It just happens that the coach, one of the coaches that is there, he used to coach me in college. So but, but no 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 mm -hmm. the other guy, there are a lot of universities that are contacting him directly because of what he did at um, at CAC Junior. They contacted him directly. I have uh, other coaches around the United States that I know personally. Yes. The first question is, what are you saying is you've got the connection to it. So you can make those promises. So what opportunity you make any promise. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. your opportunity. That's an opportunity for you. So what other opportunities can you give you that? You don't have those uh, connections and scholarships. No. This is a Google. <laughs> That's a very good question. I never thought about it that way. But I didn't make any promises about the scholarships. Other, other, other opportunities. That's what you saw other cultures. You get to travel abroad. Your Promising parents can't afford to send you to Japan, can they? Your parents, <laughs> parents can't afford to send you to Spain, can they? This is your opportunity to represent your country, be ambassadors for your country. Uh, by participating in this, in, in this event, to exposure to other international competition. Mm -hmm. Let me rephrase the question. Are you trying to tell us here that there are universities out there that will offer scholarship athletes from the Caribbean that will not exposed? Yeah. Oh, I got it. Oh, I got a scholarship. Yep. That's what I'm trying to call you that. Well, luckily for me, Fred Sobey, was the coach at Murray State University. That's where I went, Murray State University, because he was the coach. But we have we have had other coaches, other people go off to other universities. For example, this young lady is now in a, in a university in Miami. Some of them went off on their own. The parents sent them to university, but then they, when they got there, they got into the track or some other schools. So there are opportunities, and they made contact with us. As a matter of fact, I got an email from a coach in New York. Um, he wanted to recruit for my team. The competition results as well. He returned it. I went, for example, I went to go with the games and the coach from South Carolina came up to me. Are you the coach of CJ Green? I am very impressed with him. And if he's also he, anytime he's ready for a scholarship, uh, for a scholarship, here's my card. Give me a call. You can talk to him. And then after he, he won that medal at, at CAC, there were other colleges uh, contacting him directly because remember everybody's on Facebook these days. So they contacted him directly. TCU, I have, I have, uh, it's funny, you know. That is what sports do for you. When you travel, you meet so many people. And you never know when you're cross, when you're going to be uh, cross path again. And I went to Peru for this this year, and I met up with uh, you know anybody knows Tony Darling from Bahamas. I met up with her, her husband, who is a coach at TCU. TCU is a big university, isn't it? That's where Kim Collins went. Everybody know Kim Collins, right? That's where he went. Everybody know John German? That's where he went. So there are opportunities out there for, for scholarships for our region. Um, a few years ago, I wouldn't say that because everybody was looking to Jamaica. But not now. It's, it's, uh, it's widening. It's, it's widening. They're, they're not just looking at Jamaica because now what we're realizing is that the Jamaicans are now staying home. So now our kids now, the door opened, Jamaicans have decided to stay home. Plus, there's a there's this big rift between Jamaica and the USA in terms of track and field. So not a lot of the coaches now are looking to Jamaica for athletes, they're looking for other kind of athletes. Athletes are going to Jamaica. Aha, and others are from South Africa are going to Jamaica. So now that opens the door for other kind of athletes. And because our athletes did so well at the, at the Olympics this year. They're now looking to our athletes. 
here we have a uh, perfect uh, opportunity in Antigua to send off our athletes to university once they meet the academic requirements because I have to preach that as well. It's not just scholarships if you don't have the academics. But what is, this is also teaching them is how to balance the athletic with the academics. Because when I went to college, when you went to school, if you average fall below a certain grade point, you're not allowed to come here. And you have to go to class, you have to go to practice, This is also teaching them how to balance. So that, that's where the opportunity is Yes? Um, how do you involve the PE teachers in the program? Well, I try to, you know, um, go around to the different schools and uh, send the program. This is what I am offering your student from your school. Um, not all of them take it up, but um, mm -hmm. some of the PE teachers were went to Cuba to, to study, and therefore they're quite capable of uh, developing an athlete to a certain level. When they reach that certain level, they send them to me for a little bit more further training. If, I, if they have a problem in terms of teaching something in the school, in terms of track and field, they call me. Most of the time, they call me. So I, am, I, am, I have this network with them. Uh, for example, we have this uh, PE exam for the Caribbean. Right, uh, but how do you want to be? Yeah, we do be. You do be, CAT? No, I don't think so. You don't need to be, CAT? You have a national uh, PE exam? Yes, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Regional. Regional. You don't have a, no, another, you, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a, a selective class, if you want to do. Right? So they have this exam, and most of the time, when they, when they have the track and field section in, in the in the syllabus, they call me. But here's my opportunity as well to, to teach these young kids and to pull them into my program. Yeah. I remember, I remember, I remember going to uh, the school. The school does not participate at all in sport. They have this little thing at the school called a sports day. But I was there at the school explaining to these children of being uh, in sport. It's a, it's a, it's a seven-day Adventist school, but they don't participate in the national program in terms of sports. But all of that, not everybody at the school um, are seven-day Adventists. So I'm able to pull one or two of them into my program. And that's a, a part of the recruiting process that I go through as well. Other than just competition, I do that as well. When you're doing your projects, um, it, it's very important that you you also do uh, take a lot of uh, pictures. Um, here, here in the United States, opportunities galore to get gadgets, cameras, phones with cameras. <laughs> my Australian friend has a great one. My my roommate last year from Namibia, she went and bought her. Uh, video camera and she recorded everything. So we both um, have all of the lectures on video from last class. So I can always use those. Instead of me going and explaining to some coaches, I can have those to show them. Because sometimes also, they don't respect. We have a funny thing in, in Antigua. We, we don't respect our own. And if we see or hear from others, Outside, not to say it in another language.
So, so, so do you want to see some of the pictures that we took last class? Yes. yes.